Walmart's buying a TV company. Apple has better battery life than you thought. And the PlayStation 5 Pro. It's happening soon. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. We're going to start off today talking with some bombshell news that came out. And no, it is not that Capital One acquired the Discover credit card transaction network because that was big news. But Walmart is purchasing the smart TV manufacturer Vizio for two points. $3 billion. They're looking to get their SmartCast OS operating system so that they can enable a profitable advertising business that is rapidly scaling. Walmart wants to continue to inject ads into your eyes because despite the fact that they've taken over retail in the US, it's not enough. They got to continue to scale, find new ways to keep the shareholders happy, and that is by giving your eyeballs some advertisement on televisions. Now, this is not the first foray that Walmart has had into TVs. They have their own in-house brand known as ONN, which they likely have been working with some of these manufacturers for a little while, but it is now all being brought under the big blue smiley face umbrella that's happening with Walmart. So more advertising coming to your television. Amazon's already done this when it comes to Prime Video. This is just going to uh, continue to march forward because more money, more advertising, which is exactly what I'm going to do with today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their Extreme 1200R Platinum Power Supply, because this thing is highly anticipated and it is finally here. It was first revealed at Computex last year, and this will now be the most powerful SFX class power supply you can buy. It's rated for 1200 watts continuous power output all range, meaning you get full wattage regardless if you're in 110 volt or 220 volt regions. And that's all for 24 seven operation. And this incredible SFXL power supply unit is also Cybernetics Platinum certified and meets the latest SFX 12V 4.1 standard with its 12V-2x6 connector the successor to the infamous 12V horsepower, as I like to call it. Other features include a 120 millimeter fluid dynamic bearing fan with semi fanless capability that makes it run quieter overall than previous generation 1000 watt SFXL power supplies and an embossed wire design for its modular cables. Simply put, if you need the best SFX class power supply on the market, this is it. The Extreme 1200R Platinum from Silverstone. Check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring this video. We're actually going to be putting this in their Alta F2. It's a little small. Uh, we're, we're doing a little opposites thing and we're going to be giving away the Alta F2 with a PC with a 14900K and a 4090. Uh, and we'll, if you go watch us on Twitch, you can find the details on how to win that PC over there. But big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring all of that. And as soon as I'm better from COVID, I'm actually going to be building that PC live on Twitch. And as soon as Microsoft can, they're going to get out from under the grasp of NVIDIA providing every part of their infrastructure with it being reported that Microsoft is now going to be working on developing their own networking solutions so that they don't have to work with NVIDIA's owned Mellanox because it just makes it so that Team Green owns every facet of a data center. When it comes to their new Grace Hopper CPUs and GPU combos, the Mellanox networking, this is something that NVIDIA wants they want to have a full stack solution and they've been heavily promoting it but not everybody actually wants to have that on their server side so microsoft looking at developing it themselves that was one of the big things that amd did recently was actually bring networking in-house to get away from having to use other companies and uh, not rely on intel's wireless setups so we'll keep you updated as all of that happens but microsoft networking coming to a pc near you probably not probably just server scale for the first little bit and i'm gonna serve you up some deals from reese i'm serving reese up that's weird i'm sorry he's not he's not a meal he's a snack yo welcome back to ift deals bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet and hey deals. Starting off today, we have the massive Thermaltake CTE C700 Mid-Tower E80X case, available in white for only $98.63, making it $81.36 off. Then next up, we have this ASRock B650 Pro RS AM5 motherboard for only $139.99, making it $120 off. And then lastly, we'll have something that'll make every South African viewer salivate, which is this EcoFlow Delta 1000 portable power station. I have a similar EcoFlow, keeping my whole setup running through load shedding, which is fun, but I definitely appreciate it. And you can pick this one up for only $489 with include a promo code, making it $260 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. And it turns out that the owners of the iPhone 15 series actually are getting a better deal on their battery than Apple actually claimed. They're now coming out with reports saying that the battery on the 15 series is about double as performant as they were expecting. Previously, they certified that the batteries in these iPhones can make 
maintain an 80% capacity for the first 500 cycles. And now it's actually been reported that the 15 is way better than that. 15, 15 plus, 15 pro, pro max. Those can go to 80% at a thousand charge cycles. This is something that was speculated. I saw this cropping up on social media with people being like, hey, uh, iPhone 15 Pro users, have you noticed that your battery health is actually way better than it has been on previous generations? And most people were reporting between a 98 and 100% max battery capacity on their 15 units. And I went to go ahead and check mine and I'm not shy about charging my phone when and whenever I actually need it to be charged. And I'm still sitting at 100% usage even though I got this at launch day, which is way better than I've seen on any previous unit. Now, this could be Apple fudging the numbers a little bit. Apple has paid out lawsuits for lying about battery and performance in the past, but at least anecdotally, this has been noticed before and now Apple confirming, yes, their batteries are rated slightly higher than they used to be. And AMD is gonna rate their GPU slightly higher in the upcoming Medusa line of chips because it's being reported that instead of putting RDNA 4 iGPUs into Medusa, they're actually gonna be putting RDNA 5, combine that with Zen 6, and we're gonna be getting mighty fast APUs or potentially even powering the next generation of consoles. Medusa has been discussed as potentially being part of the next generation of Xbox, which Xbox had their announcement last week, which ended up being a real like nothing burger of a thing. But they did talk about how their next console is going to be the biggest leap ever. And it seems like it could be the fact that they're going to be running on a Zen 6 CPU with our DNA 5, which is not something that's even out on the market yet. And it could be very similar to what we had in 2020 when the Series X got announced, it was really, really good because it beat anything that AMD was putting out on the market. Maybe similarly that happens with this next generation, especially with reports that AMD might not be focusing on high-end gaming GPUs. And so that high-end silicon might end up going to consoles. We'll have to wait and see how that develops. But I get very excited whenever I hear this phrase APUs. And I also get excited when I hear the phrase handhelds and talking about things like the PlayStation Portal. And it turns out that somebody has actually hacked the PlayStation Portal portal to become a real PSP or PlayStation Portable, as it were. A well-known hacker of Sony's devices tweeted out this image showing off that the PPSSPP emulator for the PSP is running natively on the PlayStation Portal. It's been hacked, but unfortunately it's not ready for public consumption just yet. There's still a lot of work to be done on that front, but likely, as is the case with anything else that Sony has released and then gets hacked, they'll probably just update the firmware. So if you have a portal that you probably you want to do a little bit more too than just stream video games, maybe don't update the firmware on that bad boy anytime soon. This could open up the possibility of you getting a browser on it, running it like it's an actual Android device because it has the same silicon. It's technically running Android, so you should be able to do that. Get a web browser, load up xCloud. You could play Xbox games on your PlayStation portal potentially in the future. Or later this year, you might be able to play some PS5 Pro games, or which is likely just going to be the same games you been playing, but faster this time. There's been a lot of talk about what Sony's plans are for their consoles, and now industry insiders are coming out saying that there's a broad consensus that the PS5 Pro will likely be launching in the second half of 2022, likely around the holiday time frame that we saw for the PS5 back in 2020, probably in that late October, early November region. This is probably one of the reasons why Sony is not expecting they're gonna sell as many PS5s this year. It's in its late cycle. It's in that sunsetting process because they're gonna be coming out with something that's a little bit faster, especially with GTA 6 potentially dropping next year. They wanna have the fastest console on the market to do that, which we're expecting that the CPU clock is supposed to be a little bit faster. It's not gonna update the CPU. Just going from PS4 to PS4 Pro, the CPU didn't really get updated, which was the PS4 Pro's biggest bottleneck. PS5 CPU probably isn't the bottleneck in very many regions right now, but we are also expecting that it will get an increase of roughly 66% on the GPU cores, which likely won't translate to 66% better performance, but it likely will enable better 4K 60 gaming experiences, maybe even 4K 120 if you uh, do dynamic resolution scaling, and it, it could be a really fun time to just have a faster PS5 Pro, which 
I would like to see later this year. I definitely will try to figure out how I can get my hands on one day one, like we did with the PS5. And like I do every episode, we're gonna talk about your comments. We got Magpieify saying, if a chatbot is not good enough to hallucinate and promise things that aren't real on behalf of the company, then it's the company's fault for paying for a chatbot that is not ready for commercial use. That's on the company saving money using a chatbot that's not fit for purpose and not on the costumer who was promised something untrue. Yeah, well, you should just be informed. You should know the difference. It's on you. When you start getting phone calls from your parents, which sounds exactly like them, and they start begging you for money because they got in a bad way because their tires blew out and they need some money to get it fixed at the local Walmart because they, they have no money in their checking account, and it sounds exactly like them. They use things that you would expect only people you know would be able to say, but really it's just the fact that you published it all out on social media and you should you should know better. You shouldn't be deceived by all of these things that are meant to actually look like humans did it. That's that's on you. And we got the indulger saying, okay, hear me out. Instead of after adding more and more plus plus signs, constantly changing the standard and having fires and recalls, we roll back to the power connector that has worked fine for ages. No, you don't like it, buy another card. Oh, oh, your $1,600 4090 melted? Well, you're not rich enough to have another? You're not, you're not rich enough to, to afford the freaking server GPUs, huh? What, what are you, what are you even complaining about, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious. I obviously advocate for going back to the apens. Uh, but it does, it does feel like this, we're just moving forward with all things that just, man consequences. And then I bring up Aditya's comment because I wanted to highlight just how helpful this is. Putting timestamps in your comments so I know what section of the video you're referencing. There's a lot of times where like people will just make generic comments and it's hard for me to be like, what did I even say, what are you responding to? But we got here, 4.30, reason why I have trust issues with AI. 6.30, how I got out of social media addiction? Simple, uninstall all those social media apps or just change your phone to a five to 10 years old one or both. P.S. Based on true story using third option, slightly difficult, but worth a try. 820, just a normal day at Apple's office. 1013, better buy a fire extinguisher along with NVIDIA GPU minimum safety guarantee. And I'm having a doubt. Why are the naming the power connectors like the C and C++ language? Fantastic comments on all fronts. Thank you for commenting on multiple stories. I appreciate you guys uh, chatting with me. Also the well wishes as I am not recovering from COVID at this point. I am I am on the descent. I'm worse today than I was yesterday and I expect tomorrow's gonna be a little bit of the same. So if you uh, don't get hot news tomorrow, you know why. I felt well enough. This is the only work I've done today was just getting hot news ready. I can I can muster this. I'm gonna go do nothing else now. I'm, I'm going back to, I'm, going, I'm not going back to bed. I have to take care of my kids. I'll see you guys when I can. Maybe tomorrow.